But we just wanted to share just a, a little bit of teaching about really organizing yourselves well and doing really well on the field, collecting the things that you need to do to see a project done. So we're going to just have Keegan and, and uh, Penny go ahead and share about that. Okay, so some of you are film uh, crew people or producers and you go on the field a lot. So you will have your own stuff that you use. Uh, we just wanted to make some things available for you that we, um, that we use as a ministry, things that have helped us and um, assisted us. And some of them are just really the cross-cultural stuff that has helped, which I think is what we want to make sure we um, share with you today. So. Okay, the first slide that happens to come up is casting notes. So um, this actually will, might even apply to a degree to any like sort of voiceover work as well, not only just uh, traditional film stuff. Um, we've just got an example up there. You're going to also find these in your booklets as well. And as well, we'll get them on Slack. Yeah. Um, so one thing that we do want to emphasize is that these are just super basic, like raw examples. So definitely want to contextualize them to your media, media uh, your uh, ministry work. So obviously, a lot of times, Create International, we use non-professional actors. So it's not people used to coming on set every day to be in a movie. So we have to we help people and help ourselves as well. Um, even things like taking a photo of somebody being cast, because later on people say, remember the guy in the blue shirt? He did really well when we're trying to decide on characters, and then there may have been two guys in a blue shirt, or we don't remember. So these, <laughs> they seem so simplistic. I was like, really? Do we need to share these with you? But some things really have helped us, and we've learned also to ask very important questions, like how far did you travel to come to, to here? Because you've got to think that the next day the guy's going back on a one and a half hour bus trip and in the morning when you want him to act, he still has to come in one and a half hours. So small things that on a normal movie set, if people are arriving and they know how to do this, you wouldn't need all this information. But you need to establish how far your people are traveling and a lot of, often they can't speak English, so you have to be going through translators to get your information. So we try to get as much as we can um, and the grade at the end is really just for us as when we discuss at the end of our casting, what are we giving people so we can pick the, diff the right people for the right um, characters. If you're looking for this, as I was, and you, it's not numbered, but if you go to this part where there's the sort of the production timeline, one or two pages after that, unfortunately some of the working titles of these documents were cut off by the binding. So anyway, that's where we're looking if you're trying to find it as I was. Okay, also an extra note, just on this last one as well. Um, it does help bring stickers if you are going to have many, many actors as well. We have recently found that just um, putting their name on and then also giving them a number so that way they feel really lovely having their name on the sticker, but then really we're all referring them to them behind the scenes with their number because sometimes these names are difficult and hard and complicated. Um, but also as well as that, we definitely want to make sure that we hand these out to all those who are confirmed actors. Um, and we want to make sure that the dates um, and what day it is, uh, as well as how long they'll be there as well, and make sure they have all the information from the very beginning. That way they can start to say things like, actually, my, my child comes out of school at that time and I actually need to go, so I can't be your, your main character for your super important movie because they can only come for two days. Um, so things like that, as well as like Penny said, uh, things like transport and where to get them, so sometimes they won't even be able to get to you, maybe we've got to go get them or get another person to pick them up on their way in, things like that. Can I have the other mic, by the way? This one. Hello. This one just helps as a producer. I use this to... Um, 
uh, log all the actors on the side and how many days they've come. Every day I think, oh, so-and-so came half, this, half a day here. They've worked a full day. We even have a special code for long day because many times we ask people to be there at 8 and we don't finish till 10 at night, or you understand. So just it, the, this is something helpful for me, which seems also, again, simplistic until you're in the thick of production and on day five you can't remember who actually arrived on day one. And it helps for me to be able to give them um, appropriate gifts and thank, thanks at the end of the production. Location scouting, if you're professional, you have all your stuff. <laughs> but this has helped us as well just to say what locations do we need um, and then the possibilities, it also, I always use this when I'm interacting with our cultural advisor to try to prompt where could we go to look for something that we need um, and making sure when you get to the village and someone's opened their home, you get their name and there's so many times we just think we can, we'll assume, but what we've learned, as Ben said yesterday, always ask questions, <laughs> ask for help, um, so we, these are just helpful prompts. And even this ex uh, existing props in the location, many times, you know, you'll have something, you'll be like, wow, we can use this house, but do we need something to make it look like the home of the actor? So yeah, you can have to source props on the field and um, you don't have a lovely props department to go and open the door of and walk in and grab your stuff. You have to say, do you know someone in the village who has this particular thing and, um, and accessing it? So these are all helpful things just to be able to... Uh, Prepare for your production appropriately and make sure that your things are ready. Yeah. <laughs> Some things are self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, so um, definitely if you are kind of happen to be directing, um, we have felt that making lots of notes while you're actually doing it really helps and those of you who have directed before will know this but if you are going in at this maybe for the first time or you've only done it a few times um, this really helps because remember everything that you're doing is cross-cultural everything's in a different language you don't really remember anyone's name yet um, so taking lots of notes about that person the blue shirt did this or that um, or where the character needs to be in the story at a certain time um, yeah, again, this is a really raw copy. Sometimes these are much bigger with lots of extra room, things like that. It also helps to write down the scenes that you'll be doing because, again, after two scenes, you've actually forgotten all the scenes that you need to do that day. Um, and so it's just ha helpful to have the information ready to go. Um, again, because everyone's talking Urdu, um, you don't really, f you start to forget things. You want Okay, this one looks super complex and we've just used this on our last film shoot in um, Cambodia. But it's just, and if you, you might have a specialist and they'll have their own sheets, but don't get overwhelmed. Everything actually I wanted to say is we, like Keegan has his favorite sheet for director's notes and I have my favorite sheet that I've created, <laughs> so just make it up for yourself. But it's good to have things that help to prompt you. This is just to keep a record of people's hair, and their makeup, but many times there's cultural things like bindis or, I don't know, there's, we've had hilarious things, or you know, this person got beaten up on this day and their bruising needs to fade. So we've tried to uh, create different formats and forms that would assist whoever's doing the job to do the best possible job as we prepare for production. Yeah, okay, so log sheets. Actually, this, out of all the ones, are probably the most important for us um, and it all comes down to yeah it gets that cross-cultural cross-linguistic kind of setting um, so you can see there what we've got is just simple things like all the names and of the projects and things like that and then the, it really just goes camera on camera two what scene we're doing what shot we're doing what take we're doing and then super important column what line we're doing because um, at the end of the day, it's the lines that we're really looking out for because it's in a different language, so we need to know where we are, what we're doing. Without this, you're not going to be able to edit. Um, and by that, we really mean you physically can't edit. Like, it will not edit without this, this document um, because the editor doesn't know what the Urdu speaker is saying, um, so we don't know where they are in the story, or what's going on. The slate that we do can only go so far, so this really, really helps. 
um, as well as any sort of notes. And you can see we've even got an audio note as well, things like the pig went in the background, but that's OK here. Um, or you know, the cow in the background, that's really not OK here. Um, so things like that. Just, we actually give somebody this as a role. This is all they do, is sit on the set and write down every single take and ask at the end of every shot, was it good? Why was it good and wasn't it good and why not? So if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a line problem, you write the line is wrong, you cannot use that. But if it was something to do with the shooting, maybe we could change it in post or something. But this is, the, this is sort of the silver bullet of making cross-cultural films, which seems strange but true. And has helped us many times back in the production suite to put it all together. So. Yeah, so just as an overview, just really quickly, most of these things, most of the production side of things can be found like online in different formats in different ways. You can alter them and things like that. Everyone who's been on a film set would have seen very similar documents. Um, so it's not like this is the only place you're ever going to find them. But the, the log sheet especially is, is quite distinctive. And um, so definitely if there's one thing you want to take away, this is definitely something you want to make sure is included um, in your films. Yeah.